Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. We greet you on this the 17th day of the month of Rabi'u Thani of the year 1445, of the 30th day of October of the year uh, 2020, 23, I think, uh, from my Caribbean island of Trinidad with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In previous videos since the war started, uh, at this phase of the war in the Holy Land, in Israel, uh, uh, for maybe what, two weeks now, uh, I, I think it was in my first response, yes, that I argued that if Israel was unaware that this attack was coming, and the government and armed forces of Israel were taken completely by surprise, then a camel can also <laughs> pass through the eye of a needle, <laughs> and, a, and a cow can also jump over the moon. <laughs> yes, it's so funny. No, they're lying. They're lying, of course. They knew it was just another, it was another Pearl Harbor. It was another 9-11. They knew that this attack was coming and they allowed a thousand Israelis who could have still been alive today to be killed. Yes, they sacrificed their lives of their own people cynically so. Why? Because they had an agenda. What is that agenda? We argued in our first response that in the same way that the United States government allowed Pearl Harbor to take place so that it could transform public opinion in the United States, which was against the United States entering the Second World War, to be changed, to be transformed and allow the United States with public opinion to enter the Second World War. And that's what happened. We said that in the same way that there was a plan, a master plan behind 9-11, they allowed 9-11 to take place. And so many thousand lives were lost, except, of course, those who were told don't go to work on that day, and they didn't go to work. So, so many lives were lost, who could have been saved? But the United States cynically allowed all these lives to be lost because they had an agenda for their troops to be, they call it boots on the ground, in Afghanistan, in, in Iraq, etc., in Syria, etc., uh, seeking regime change. And so similarly, we argue that Israel had a big plan ahead of it because that's why they allowed this to happen. What could that plan be? We are offering some political and military analysis, knowing that I'm not an expert in the field, so what I offer is chicken feed compared to what others can do who are experts in the field. But I can offer some comments. And I said, what Israel wants is to get the war to expand. What Israel wants is to suck the United States and Britain, NATO, into the war, into that region of the world, so Israel doesn't have to fight alone. And what Israel wants is to expand the war in such a way that she can achieve a number of objectives, not just dealing with the Islamic resistance in uh, Gaza, not just with dealing with Hezbollah in Lebanon, who is a threat to Israel, but the most important one of all is to denuclearize Iran and, if possible, to get regime change in Iran. That is the master plan. This is my view in my first response. Events which have been unfolded since then have, in, have, have confirmed my views that this is not just a war between Israel and the Islamic resistance. You don't need an aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean Sea next to Israel if it's simply a war with the Islamic resistance in Gaza. You don't need Britain and France and Germany lining up to send troops and Patriot anti-aircraft missiles and so on being placed all over in bases around. Not at all. 
because they also know that this plan is for a bigger war, and the target is Iran. Well, then, the Iranian foreign minister is reported to have said recently that Israel has already crossed the red line. And so now <laughs> this video is being recorded to share with you my view that yes, indeed, we are going to be we're going to witness soon the war being expanded, and that Iran will be in the war. And we mentioned the implications of war with Iran, not just that Iran will become a nuclear power immediately, but other than that. We said that the Iran will, will block the Straits of Hormuz. Iran has the capacity to do that. And the, when the Straits of Hormuz are blocked and oil cannot get through, the uh, supply of oil is disrupted, disrupted, the price of oil is going to escalate. It's now almost $100 a barrel. Very soon it will reach 150 and more than that. And as the price of oil goes up, something mysterious will happen to the world of money. Why? What connection is there between the price of oil and money? Answer, it's bogus money. It's fraudulent money. It's haram money being used by all of us today, all of us paper money, plastic money, electronic money, cryptocurrencies, central bank digital currencies, all of them. This is the subject I will be teaching on the 17th of December, this December, inshallah, in a seminar in Manchester. And you will soon find the video on my YouTube channel and you can register to attend that seminar, inshallah. It'll be a few hours long. So all of these money are bogus and fraudulent and haram. And I have been teaching this subject for 25 years now. And I am correct in my views on money. But uh, our scholars don't seem to share the same view with me. They will never say that this money is haram. The institutions of Islamic learning producing the scholars, they are called the Jamia, like Jamia to Azhar in Egypt. Or they have they given the name Darul Ulum, or the House of Knowledge. And they are proliferating all over the world. You have so many of them in Britain now. And they are ominously silent on the subject of money and they will have to answer on judgment day. So what's going to happen when you have bogus money? Answer, as the price of oil goes up, all the money of the world will go down. But if we are using money with intrinsic value, money which is in the Quran, money which is in the Sunnah. And when the Messiah returns, he will be using that money, gold and silver coins. When we, the price of oil goes up, then all of this bogus money will start losing value. Wait and you will see. And as money loses value, prices will rise. Constantly rising prices is called inflation. But this will not be gradual inflation that's coming when this war expands. It will be dramatic inflation. And when that happens, it will validate this Islamic eschatology that we've been teaching. And our critics have been criticizing and criticizing and criticizing. Ah, yes, that 
dramatic inflation that's coming will validate what we've been teaching in Islamic eschatology. And the world that is listening and viewing will know that you are bogus in your scholarship. And so prepare for dramatic inflation. How do we prepare for dramatic inflation? Number one, if you can get out of paper money and transform it into gold and silver, do that. You should have been doing that long ago. Number two, it's not just gold and silver which can be used as money. When there's a shortage of gold and silver, what will our prophet do? They don't care for this. But he would use wheat, he would use barley, he would use dates, he would use salt. And we would use sugar as well. We would use rice with the, with the haspadi rice. Any one of these articles of food consumption, which are in an abundant supply in the market and have a shelf life, can be used as money instead of gold and silver. When bogus money is collapsing, and inflation is ripping us off and reducing us to poverty and to destitution as happening in Pakistan. The other thing we can do is to use barter. Barter still is a form, but it's a re it has its limitations, barter. We should stock up on non-perishable food from now. Once you listen to this video, go and buy non-perishable food, tin food, stuck up on water, stuck up on food, and stuck up on energy, on fuel. If you get wood, you can at least use wood for cooking. I use wood when I roast my fish. I roast my fish, I don't use charcoal, I use wood. And I make sure that the flame does not touch the fish. No, the fish is cooked with the heat. And I know that it is the smoke because there's a lid for the charcoal uh, grill. And when I put down the lid, it's the smoke which gives the taste to the fish, yes. So I'm telling this to you just to prepare you for tomorrow, which is around the corner of dramatic inflation coming to the world because now it seems that war with Iran is inevi inevitable. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.